Houdini 20 is out and with it comes the new quad remesh tool. So let's take a look at the different things you can do with that. So I just have this model here. This is a, a bust from um, 3dscans.com. I'll leave a link to that in the description. You can go to that website and pick this model up for free. We're going to be using this to take a look at the, the new quadri mesh tool inside Houdini 20. I'll also leave this project file on Patreon. If you want to just uh, take a look at that, you can do that on there. But let's go ahead and drop down this remesh tool. So with this remesh tool, it's got some things that is in beta. It's got some things that kind of work okay, some things that kind of could use some improvement but overall it is pretty decent in my opinion. So let's take a look at this. So just by default here with the default settings, you're gonna see that it does a pretty crappy job. And the main reason for that is it just doesn't have enough polygons to work with inside uh, or with this, with this model. So let's increase the target quad count to like 100,000 and immediately you see that we have a much better result and that went extremely fast this this quadri mesh is very very fast uh let's even just crank this up to 1 million and it takes like no time to process at all it's already done by the time i'm finished and saying that uh, but you see that we have this kind of weird bumpiness going on that's not an error we just need to drop down some normals and we can correct that take a look that just cleans that on up we do have a little bit of an issue going on with the, uh, the topology there. That's kind of to be expected. You're going to have some issues. We have another one right here. You're going to have some issues with these automatic uh, remesh tools, but you can kind of clean those up on your own. This will get you like 98% of the way there, 99% of the way there. Uh, we can also do some things to maybe get those to go away. So let's take a look. Maybe we can affect this decimation level. So maybe we lower that. It's gonna affect our final output. Um, so that didn't really work. Maybe we increase it here. And that got rid of those errors for us. And all that's doing, we we'll have a setting to see actually what that does. If we change this output from extracted mesh to global parameterization. Basically, kind of my understanding of the way that this works on the back end is this decimates the model to a you know, a model that looks somewhat like this. This is what it decimates it down to. And then it bases the remesh off of this and a combination of this and the high res model and kind of interpolates back to the high res model um, in order to generate uh, the mesh that, that you get for the extracted mesh. It's kind of a loose explanation of it. Um, don't hold me to that as being like a, how it, how it fully works, but that's kind of my understanding of how it works on the back end. We can't dive into it, can't double click and see uh, what's happening on the back end. But like I said, you can play around this decimation level to get some different results to correct some of those errors. Let's go ahead and drop down our pig head and we can see some of the other stuff that we might run into. So we'll wire that in here. Let's go ahead and just set this to hard and get rid of that shader. I need that and take a look at our picket. So this is too many polygons. Let's drop this down to 100,000 and we get a mesh that looks like this. So we have, uh, again, an error here. So you can play around with, like I said, our decimation level and that can get us some different results and that has cleaned up that area pretty well. Overall, it looks pretty decent. And if we drop this down even more, maybe to 40,000 or something like that, we have a pretty decent model here. Maybe we want to make sure that it is symmetrical. We have some options for that. We can do some symmetry things here. Obviously, if we're trying to make it symmetrical, you know, mirror uh, this side to this side, it may not work that well. Uh, it's gonna give us some weird stuff going on. So we have the mirror here. We can change this from the positive to the negative axis and we can get <laughs> some weird things going on here. Again, we have some issues right here. So maybe we come and mess around with the decimation levels and we can get some of that to resolve. And 
uh, looks like I like this side a little bit better. So maybe we come in here and we just mirror this side as well. And we get some interesting results there. And obviously this is not something uh, that we would want to use, but you can do some mirroring. It doesn't necessarily work the best all the time, but it does a decent job of creating a symmetrical-ish me uh, mesh. And then we can also, so we lose some of the, the detail here. So if we look at this, we lose some detail here in the eyeballs, that section. So we can select this project points and we can get a little bit of that back. If we really crank up the subdivision, so we'll get even more if I set that back to like a million. You can see that we get that all mostly back there. So you can reproject the points. It's sort of like a ray operation that you uh, do pretty consistently inside Houdini. That's kind of what it does with that. Let's go ahead and uncheck that. And then we have the curvature edge flow. We can use that to affect the way that our, our edges are flowing along the geometry. So you can see how that's changing the way the geometry flows. And if we hover over the viewport, we can press enter, and this will show us where our seams are at, our field singularities. We can even select our direction field, take a look at that, and we can take a look at the vector style, uh, scale. And you can see this is kind of how the, um, the topology is, is flowing along our geometry. This is kind of what's controlling that. But we can also kind of set that ourselves uh, using a guide attribute. So if I go ahead and drop down a primitive wrangle, we can wire this on in and I'm going to just create a, this is, needs to be a vector three. So we'll do V at V or sorry, V at guide and we'll just set that equal to zero. And by default, that's just going to make sure that uh, it's not really doing anything. Is any any vectors that are set to zero, any of the guide vectors that are set to zero, it's just going to uh, do its own thing. But then we can change how this looks by just selecting some of these polygons. We'll set that up in the Y direction. And if we come to our quadrant mesh, we just need to set the guide attribute name. We'll call that guide. That's the attribute that we created. And it uh, gives us a little bit of an error there to start, but if we start to crank up the guide weight, you can see how that's going to change our geometry. Let's just drop this down in the topology. So it is, oops, a little bit easier to see how the geometry is flowing here. So, oops, let's go back to the guide, guide weight. So as I start to drag this up, you can see we can kind of correct some of those errors as well. So obviously we have the error that's being created there. Let's, let's actually, yeah, see it's not doing anything with that disabled. But if we disable that, you can see that we get back to, to what we had initially. I'm not really sure why at a weight of zero that it is affecting our geometry because this shouldn't be affecting our geometry, but uh, maybe beta error, I'm not sure. But as we start to drag this up, you can see how that starts to change our geometry. So our lines that were, our edge flow that was kind of going up and kind of a little bit towards the mouse section as I drag this up, now is just kind of going more to the left and up towards the head. And we can do a couple of these if we want. So if I drag another one down, can wire this up. Maybe we set this one to be in the X direction and we select some different polygons maybe over here and let's just get rid of that so we have that affecting our our polygons over here we can see what that's doing by just disabling this so you can see that they go from kind of moving up the mesh to enabled and it kind of moves up towards the ear instead of up towards the mouth so you can really kind of dial in the way that your your geometry is flowing across your mesh using this. I don't think that this is really the best way to do it. Maybe there's a better way to, to go about this. Maybe you can use 
um, like a, a noise or something to to do this. I'm not really sure. Um, this was just my initial initial tests of, of how it all works. But um, I would like to see personally, if you're watching side effects, um, hopefully this is something that's planned or even possible. I don't even know if this is possible, but they have these, these guides that we can see in the viewport. I'd love to be able to like click and drag some of these points and kind of move our seams around, but uh, I'm not sure if that's possible. I think that would be super cool and would be super helpful, make it a lot more artist friendly, um, but that's just my two cents. But anyways, that is a quick overview of the Quadri Mesh. My thoughts are it is extremely fast. Um, it is only going to get better. Um, I don't think it's the worst tool in the world. I don't think it's perfect at all either, um, but it is uh, definitely a good basis to start out with and it'll definitely work for remeshing um, things like, like this, uh, this bus that we have up here. It definitely works to remesh this. Uh, like 3D scans very well and very, very quickly. If you need to to do very quick remeshes, you can definitely get those done using this quad remesh, um, not having to use the regular remesh of uh, the, the triangles, um, or the, yeah, the tries. It doesn't work that well. In my opinion, I never really liked the, the normal remesh inside Houdini. So this is definitely a welcome welcome node for me. Um, I do have the Exocide Quadrant remesher, which works really, really well as well. Um, but for those of you who don't have the extra money to spare, this is a tool that is going to, to work really well for you. So definitely play around with it. You're going to have to balance some of these settings out, the decimation levels, the... Um, target quad count, obviously, and then the, the curvature edge flow. I don't know if I looked at this either, but if I look at the uh, target quad count, it's very, very close in the primitives to what we set. So it does a very, very good job and is a very good base, in my opinion, for uh, this quad remesh tool that SideFX is building. Obviously, they're going to make it better. I have uh, all the faith in the world that SideFX will do a great job with this once it comes out of, of beta and we'll have some some extra features that'll make it all the more better but anyways like i said this is a quick overview of the quad remesh let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments if you want to learn more about houdini in general or if you just want to see some of the new stuff in houdini 20 then make sure to keep an eye out because i will have more videos coming but anyways thank you guys for watching and have a good day